Okay, here we're going to prove the following fact about primitive roots. So previously we proved that there's a primitive root modulo any prime. Um, and what we're going to prove here is that if that A and B are both primitive roots modulo P, then A times B is not a primitive root modulo P. So uh, we're going to look at a pretty simple example of this before we prove this statement. But um, I urge you to find a more interesting example. Um, and that is if three, 3 and 5 are primitive roots mod 7. So you can check that. I won't check that here in detail, but you can check that pretty easily. Um, but 3 times 5 equals 15, which is congruent to 1 mod 7, is not a primitive root. Okay, good. So um, let's get into the proof of this statement in general. Okay, so since A is a primitive root, that means that we can write B as follows. So we can write um, B equals A to the K um, for K between 1 and P minus 1. Great, and I should say that here we can assume that k is not equal to 1 because that means that a and b would be the same. And um, uh, I guess, well, I guess we can assume that they're the same, but we can assume that k is not equal to p minus 1 because that would make b equal to 1 by Fermat's little theorem, but uh, we know that 1 is not a primitive root. Great, so now there are two things that we know. Since um, a is a primitive root, um, we know the order uh, modulo p of A must be p minus 1. So that's one of the defining factors of a primitive root. And then since B is a primitive root, Um, we know that the order of P of B equals P minus 1. But another thing that we know, since uh, the B is equal to A to the K, we know that this is the same thing as the order mod P of A to the K. But now we can use this formula for the order of a power of an element modulo P. And that is, this is equal to the order of A over the GCD of K and the order of A. Okay. So let's see where that get, gets us. So these two circles uh, equated to each other tells us that uh, P minus 1 over the GCD of K and P minus 1 must be equal to P minus 1. Okay, good. So uh, I'll clean up the board, then we'll start at this point, um, and then... Uh, Go towards the end. Okay, so we ended at this point. So we know that uh, if A and B are both primitive roots and we write B um, in terms of A, then we can calculate the order of B two different ways and that gives us the following equation. P minus 1 over the GCD of K and P minus 1 equals P minus 1. So now notice that tells us that the GCD of K and P minus 1 equals 1. Good. But now we know that P minus 1 has got to be even. Well, so uh, I, I guess we don't know that because we could have an odd prime, but there's only one, sorry, we could have an even prime, but there's only one of those and that's two. And in that case, uh, if P is equal to two, there aren't two distinct primitive roots modulo P. There's only one and everything breaks down here. So in fact, um, in this case, we probably want this to be an even, an odd prime. So that means P minus 1 is even. But then if this GCD is 1, that tells us that K is odd. Great. Which tells us that K plus 1 is even. So K plus 1 is even. 
And now what we want to do is calculate the order modulo p of a times b. But that's equal to the order modulo p of a times a to the k because of uh, our expression for b. But that's equal to the order modulo p of a to the k plus 1, which is equal to, and we're going to use the same formula again, so I won't write out all the details. So this is equal to p minus 1 over the GCD of k plus 1 and p minus 1. Okay, great. But now we know that this denominator is at least 2 because we know that p minus 1 is even and k plus 1 is even. So that makes this less than or equal to p minus 1 over 2. Great. But that tells us that the order modulo p of a, b is strictly less than p minus 1, which tells us that it's impossible for it to be um, a primitive root. Okay, that's the end of this example.